welcome to Used Bike Heaven with me, Fran Robinson. Each week, myself and the Men & Motors team give one lucky viewer the chance to test ride three bikes that'll fit their lifestyle, needs and, most importantly, their pocket. For this week's show, we've assembled a selection of easy-to-maintain, cheap-to-buy and reliable commuter bikes. And, of course, Rod Gibson will be on hand to give us some useful tips on living with a used bike. So, on with the show. Let's meet this week's test rider. Alistair McKillop is a bank manager from Edinburgh. He's been riding bikes for 30 years and is looking for a second bike to take the load off his pride and joy, his Kawasaki 636, as it's beginning to get a little tired of travelling daily across the Forth Bridge in wintry weather. And Alistair wants a cheap, reliable workhorse to do the job instead. I think I know just the bikes he's looking for. So Alistair's looking for a reliable commuter for around £2,000. With this budget, we've got a selection of cheap and cheerful bikes that should only take minimal care. They won't set your world on fire, but they will get you to and from work every day. All our bikes are between four and six years old and are very popular favourites amongst the career fraternity. So let's see what the first bike is on offer today. First up, it's Kawasaki's GPZ500S. If you want a bike that can do it all well, then you should consider the GPZ. The slim, light Quack is a perfect beginner's bike, ideal for couriers and good for the vertically challenged, with a seat height of 760mm. The parallel twin engine runs forever and is lively enough to keep the riding experience entertaining. A top half fairing and belly pan cowling adds style and practical wind cheating to just over 120 miles an hour. It has sports bikes looks and handles itself well. So now it's time to meet Alistair. Welcome, Alistair. Thank you. I see you found the GPZ then. I have indeed. So what do you think of it? I think it's lovely. It's very clean. Mm. Oh, very it's an sporty looking, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's considering the age of it, it's very nice, very nice indeed. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got the nice fairing, because you do some miles, don't you? I do indeed, in inclement weather, so the fairing's nice, keep mm -hmm. me protected, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's it's a Kawasaki, you have a Kawasaki, don't I you? I have a Kawasaki, yes. I like Kawasaki's, I've got a Ninja 636, so mm. this would fit in very well with yeah. what I have at the moment. I do apologise for it not being green. Don't apologise, don't apologise. I, I don't like green too much, I'm afraid, so I'm quite happy for it to be red. My goodness, you are a first. <laughs> a Kawasaki man that doesn't like the green meanies. Brilliant. Fairly rare, I've got to say, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. But I stand out, that's it. I'll say. Yes, right, so we need you to tell us what you think to the ride. Indeed, looking forward to it. Can't wait to get this out on the road and see how it goes. Well, get your kit on and tell us what you think. OK, thank you, I will. This Kawasaki is a 1997 model, priced at £2,200. Genuine sports bike style doesn't come much cheaper than this. When buying second-hand, avoid high-mileage versions as they may have been used and abused by couriers. Aim for a well-looked-after GPZ that has been loved and cherished as this model of machine tends to be. We wear alternator woes on early ones. Engines run very quietly unless there's a problem and are smoke-free unless they've been over-revved. It's Insurance Group 9, cheap to run and a bargain when picked up second-hand. As a budget all-rounder, the ageing parallel twin still takes a bit of beating. Commute, scratch or learn the biking ropes, the GPZ is definitely worth a pop. So Alistair's returned with the GPZ, what did you think? Well, it rides as well as it looks, lovely. Very yeah. nice, yeah, very responsive. Considering it's a 500, mm. it goes very well, so very pleased with it, very nice indeed. Yeah, I mean, you're used to obviously your 636. <laughs> yes. This must feel tiny to you. It feels tiny, and obviously the brakes aren't as progressive, but it's still fun. It's mm. a, you know, I know I'm looking for a commuter, but I also want some fun in it, and this would give me both. I'm yeah. very impressed with it. And did you find this useful? Yes, yes, definitely kept the weather off. Mm -hmm. So very comfortable, yep. Very, very good. Very nice. Right, so, well, I mean, you know, are the dials and everything okay? Very yeah. clear, I mean, typical Kawasaki, so nice and clear. Uh, fairly old-fashioned, but you know, it's not a new bike, so I'm quite happy with that. Mm -hmm. Everything's a nice touching distance, mm -hmm. everything's to hand. No, very nice, mm -hmm. overall. Very nice bike. Mm. And I must say, as you came in, it is such a beautifully clean looking bike. It's gorgeous. And that's the thing with these things. With, with 500s, they're obviously, you know, <laughs> couriers or loved and cherished. Yes. And this has obviously this been... This is a cherished bike. Yes, you look at the engine and it's just amazing. It's lovely. It's a cherry. Yeah. It's very, very nice. So why are you going for a 500? Well... Oh, as I say, I'm commuting, so I don't really need anything with too much power. Yeah. But I need some power, obviously, yeah. to get to enjoy myself with. Mm -hmm. So I felt it's a nice in between. A yeah. 500 is nicely. It suits me. Uh, it's not too fast, not too slow. Mm. Price wise and insurance as well. Obviously, Absolutely. A Absolutely. It's a winner. So it's a win win, really, for this. All right, fantastic. Well, before we actually decide what bike you're going to go for, we need to give each one a scoreboard. 
Right. Okay. So I need to know what you think to the Kawasaki GPZ. So Alistair, what do you give it for style? Eight. It looks like a real bike and I like it. And performance? Seven. For a 500 it performs very well. And practicality? Eight. It's a very practical bike. And reliability? Seven. Kawasaki so it will be reliable. And value for money? Six. Slightly pricey but it's a very nice bike. Well that's bike number one Alistair but of course you don't have to choose just now because we have two more bikes to go. So on to bike number two. Bike 2 is the Suzuki GS500e. The GS500 has been around for donkey's years and is a very sensible commuter bike, capable of 220 miles on one tank of petrol. It's the lightest of our three contenders today, weighing in at 173 kilos. It's as basic as they come, but if it's traffic busting that you're after, then it's fine. It's also in the lowest insurance group, a nice cheap Group 7. The GS is an ideal commuter with sporty handling and a big bike feel, but the finish isn't all that brilliant. So Alistair, on to bike number two. Indeed, yes. The Suzuki GS500. What do you think of it? A bit dodgy. I'm not quite sure if I like it or not, to be honest. It's a little disjointed. It's a little disjointed, yes. It looks mm. a bit like a kick bike. It's, it's no, neither one thing or the other. Yeah, I mean, we've got the kind of bandity retro, yeah, nice, retro, nice ish Quite nice, thing. nice ish, but the rear end. 70s. 1970s. Yeah, it reeks yes, off to me. Absolutely. And I'm, the build quality, just looking at it, I'm concerned about. Mm. I mean, obviously, Suzuki. Anything over 600, Six, 600 seven, plus. 50, beautiful, but yep. this one I'm not too sure about, I've no, got to say. No, I'm with you, I'm not sold on it. Yeah. But it may redeem itself. You never know. Yes, it may. I mean, what do you think of this as well? The clock's, again, a bit off-putting, mm. but we'll see when we're riding on it. But at the moment, it's just very, very basic-looking bike. It's not appealing to it you at the moment. It doesn't appeal at all. But you never know. It you may just know. grab you. It may ride like a dream. It may. Get your helmet on and let us know. Excellent. <laughs> Suzuki added the GS to its range in 1989 as a cheap sports bike and hasn't been changed much since. Alistair is riding the 99 model priced at £2,000. The engine is a parallel twin that has a good reputation for reliability. The chassis gives plenty of feedback and it's a very easy machine to maintain. Compliant suspension gives a comfortable ride all round. The front fork is adjustable for preload, while the rear suspension features a seven-way adjustable spring. It's a riding school favourite, so do check for any crash damage. The GS is a popular bike, so there should be plenty of used models to choose from. So, Alistair didn't like the looks of the Suzuki, but how did it perform? Alistair? Awful. <gasps> it rides the way it looks, it's just... Awful. Really? Yes. Well, talk me through it. Well, the handling's bad, very loose. The rear is just so loose, there's no feel to it at all. The brakes are very sloppy, very spongy, no feel in them at all. And I couldn't see out the back because the, the mirrors are fairly bad as well. So all in all, it's just awful. Is it comfortable? <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't oh, even goodness. say it was comfortable. And there's not even any fairing to protect there's you There's no the fairing. Wind. I mean, obviously, the first thing I feel is you feel very exposed, but the, there's just no comfort, there's, there's no feeling of confidence in riding a bike at all. Really? I'm afraid not. Goodness gracious, I mean it's £2,000. Yes, I, I can think of better ways to spend my £2,000 really? I think, yes. I mean, um, it feels like a hairdryer, it sounds like a hairdryer. Mm, I mean for me, to be honest, I, the, the engine and everything about this bike actually doesn't look particularly cherished. No, no, it, no TLC. No. No, and as we said before, disjointed. It does look like <laughs> yes. that. And obviously at the back end. Yes. It's like riding two different bikes. The front and the back, there's just, there's no symmetry at all. Really? Very strange, very strange feeling bike. Is there anything you can think of that's all right? Uh, I'll be getting off it soon. <laughs> That's Good it, I'm grief. sorry, that's all I can say. Really? Oh my goodness, well I don't even go to the scoreboards, to be honest with you. Because I don't even really like the paint job. I don't no. like it, no, well there you go. I mean, goodness, well, we love Suzuki's. We do love Suzuki's. Just not yes, this not, particular just one. Just not this model. Okay, well shall we go to the scoreboards then, I think see what we you should. give it? yes. So Alistair, style? Four. I think it's an absolute disaster. <laughs> and performance? Two. It rides like it looks. Oh, and practicality. Two. I just don't see it being practical at all. Reliability? Two. Again, I just, I'm not comfortable or confident with the bike. Ooh, and value for money? 
two. <laughs> There's a theme here, I just, it's overpriced. So that's bike number two, the Suzuki GS500, which I think it's safe to say, Alistair, you didn't like. <laughs> I think you did prefer the GPZ, didn't <laughs> you? Did, I did, I did, yes. Well, of course, you can't choose yet because we've got bike number three to come. Okay. But before we go to that, here's Rod with a few essential tips on how to make your life with a used bike much easier. Now, all three bikes on tonight's show have twin cylinder engines. So what does that mean and why does it make them ideal commuters? Well, this is a crankshaft assembly from a 125 Honda, which is a single cylinder engine. And as you can see, there's one piston there. Now, the way that this works inside the engine is if I push the piston up and down, I can make the crankshaft spin around. And that's basically how the engine works. A series of explosions above the piston, which makes it spin. Now that makes for a very light, small and compact engine unit, which is ideal for small bikes. But once you start to increase the capacity and put bigger pistons in it, this kind of engine layout can start to feel quite rough. Now this engine from a 250 Honda has two cylinders and two pistons, which you can see here. The advantage of a twin cylinder engine is it runs much more evenly and the bike can feel a lot smoother to ride. It's still a nice, small, compact engine unit. It hasn't grown too much, so it can make an ideal middleweight commuter. Now for the ultimate in performance you may end up with a four cylinder engine rather like this one from an old Suzuki GS1000. More modern sports bikes like R1s and Fireblades will have a more compact version of basically this engine layout and as you can see this is quite a big lump. Now that's one reason why a twin cylinder engine may be more ideal for a daily commuter. And we'll be hearing more from Rod later. So far this week Alistair from Scotland has been testing 500s. We put him on the GPZ which he absolutely loved. Did everything he needs it to do. We also put him on the GS500, which he didn't like so much. In fact, he couldn't stand it. After the break, we'll be revealing bike number three and we'll see how it shapes up against bikes one and two. See you in a mo. Welcome back to Used Bike Heaven. This week, Alistair McKillop from Edinburgh is looking for a daily commuter to take the strain off his Kawasaki 636. So far, he's tested the GPZ500 and the GS500 and is about to go out on his third and final test. Time to reveal all. Our third bike today is Kawasaki's ER5. The ER5 is another reliable Kawasaki. It's the same parallel twin engine as the GPZ, but retuned to make it more tractable low down. Perfect for those who are vertically challenged as the 17 inch wheels make the twin low. And it's also pleasantly light at 174 kilos. While the ER5 chassis is basic with twin shocks and disc drum brakes, the parallel twin engine isn't. You get liquid cooling, six gears, two camshafts, vibration smoothing balancers and four valves per cylinder. The ER5 is a good learner bike and favoured courier hack, but it does lack weather protection. It's insurance group eight and a very cheap way into the big bike world. So Alistair. We don't normally do this, but we've thrown another Kawasaki in. Yes, another Quacko, yeah. Yeah, an ER5. What an do you ER5, think of it? Yeah. Basic, but nice. Yeah, it looks nice. Uh, see, I spot the colour theme, all red bikes, that's okay. This is it. Uh, I see it's nice, yeah. I like yeah. it, I like the look of it. I mean, they've got, the, the, they've actually got, they're a basic bike, aren't they? But yep. they have got the nice naked feel to them, yeah. these. They're quite Everything nice you're looking for on a bike, nice and basic. Mm. I would probably get a bikini fairing if yeah. I was taking this, again, for the weather. Mm. But overall, it looks nice. It's been obviously cared for, so I'm really looking forward to riding this one as well. Mm. I do like the dials, actually, on this one as well. Dials are nice and clear. I can mm. see it's an import just by the dials, but that's not a problem, not an yeah. issue. And everything looks fine. They look good, solid bikes, don't they? They do, they do. Absolutely. Shall we see what it's like on the tarmac? Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Get it on the tarmac and see how we go. Marvellous. Let's do it. This ER5 is a 2000 model, priced at £2,000. Compared with the GPZ, the ER5 is basic. Its soft state of tune means it's as easy to ride as it is to fall off a log. ER5s are favoured by riding schools, so beware when buying of scratched engine bars. The finish isn't as durable as it could be, so do check this when buying. Watch out for engine noise, oil leaks and smoke. There are tons of ER5s out there, so if you look hard enough, you'll find a minter. Plenty of bikes are more exciting, but the ER has all the performance you really need at a pretty reasonable price. So then, Alistair, the ER5. The ER5. What do you think? Well, we said earlier it looked like a basic bike, mm -hmm. and unfortunately it rides like one. 
I thought you might say that. There's not a great deal of focus in it. I mean, it's a very comfortable ride, but it's a bit soft for me, mm -hmm. a bit woolly in the steering and the brakes, although they're all right, there's not, not much feel to them. A bit spongy. A bit spongy. Mm, bit spongy. Which doesn't inspire confidence. It doesn't inspire confidence, no. especially with a soft rear end. Yeah, and if you're doing uh, 70 miles a day on it, you don't want a soft rear end. I would be very tired, yes, and my <laughs> rear end would be very painful, yes. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I think these basically, they're a nice bike, they're well put together. Absolutely well, yep, absolutely. I think they are geared towards a, a new rider, aren't they? That's that, right. you know, isn't going to go fast, just needs to get used to the roads. You can pick them up so cheaply, these. Right. I mean, Cheap, good, reliable mm. bike. But for me, with the, coming from the 636, yeah. it's too far a leap. Yeah. So I wouldn't, I, there's no excitement to it. So. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's very well kept, this one, actually. Yes, it's a very nice looking bike. Yeah. Uh, everything's in its place. It's cool, yeah. But is visibility all right on this one? Everything's fine. The, mm. the mirrors are good. You can see it behind you, which is always a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Nice soft seat. Mm hmm. It's a nice bike, mm. but as I say, just lacks focus. You are a Kawasaki man, aren't you? I, I love quackers. Yeah, I do love quackers. <laughs> I can <yes>. tell. <laughs> Absolutely right. Well, we need to go to the scoreboards. We do indeed. So, Alistair, style. Six. Nice looking bike, but bland. And performance? Six. Performance is okay, not too great, but it's all right. And practicality? Seven. It's a, it's a very practical bike, and for a beginner, it'd be an excellent bike. And reliability? Seven. Again, it's a quacker, so I think I'm confident in the reliability. You're such a Kawasaki man. Value for money. Seven. I think considering what you're getting, it's good value for money. So, Alistair, you've ridden all three bikes and overall on the scoreboard, the GPZ wins for 36 points. But before you make your final decision, let's go to Dr Rod, who's going to give us a recap of each bike. Kawasaki's GPZ500 is powered by half a Ninja engine, which means it's solid, dependable and fun. The water-cooled twin is reliable as clockwork, provided it's been serviced properly and will run to over 55,000 miles before needing any kind of mechanical attention. It's also quite cheap to run. Expect to get 9,000 miles from a rear tyre and over 14,000 from a front. The suspension can get soggy on older bikes, but it won't cost the earth to improve it. The only known problem with these bikes is a tendency to ship rainwater into the fuel tank which can clog up the carburetors and make the tank rust from the inside. But if you're looking for cheap, dependable fun, the GPZ could be just a ticket. Like the two Kawasaki's, the GS500 has a four-stroke twin engine and comes from basically the same design stable. However, this one is air-cooled, which makes it a little simpler to service. It also qualifies for Group 7 insurance, which makes it cheaper to run than either of the two Quacks. It can manage up to 235 miles in a tank full, which is useful for a commuter, and fitting a set of Bridgestone BT54 tyres will help out in the twisties. But Suzuki's 500 Twin is a little less well finished than the Kawasaki's and it can begin to look shabby quite soon after the warranty has evaporated. For £2,000 on a T-plate, this really does need to be a minter. Alistair's third bike, the Kawasaki ER5, is basically a budget version of the GPZ500 and has a bit of a bargain basement feel, but it is a good solid performer and can make an excellent all-rounder. This bike is three years younger than the GPZ for more or less the same money, so it could be a better buy. But the lack of the GPZ's fairing will limit comfortable cruising speeds to around 80 miles an hour. Watch out for notchy steering head bearings and rust on the exhaust headers, which is almost impossible to stop. You should get at least 45 miles to the gallon from this bike though, and with insurance set at Group 8, it's probably the sensible option. Right Alistair, have you made your mind up? Yes, I have. Well, come on then. You have to put me out of my misery, <laughs> although I think I know what you're going to say. Which one is it going to be? Well, you could be right. It's going to be the GPZ. <laughs> I didn't really actually need to ask, <laughs> I did don't I? think you had to, no. no. It's well, a lovely bike. It, it is, isn't it? It's, it's everything you want. It is indeed. And it's not a bad price. It's not a bad price. It could be better price, It could, though. Be, better. could be better. Should we go and see if we can bag it? I think that's a very good idea. Let's go. Today's deal is being done at DK Motorcycles in Newcastle under Line. Alistair will be trying to get a deal with Gary McKay over the GPZ, which is currently on sale for £2,200. Well, I'm here in the dealership about to introduce Gary to Alistair. So, Gary, this is Alistair. How are you doing? Alistair, Alistair you? Gary. Yep. Two Scots, I must be mad. <laughs> so, you're interested the in the... The sparks are going to fly. <laughs> you're interested in the GPZ? Perhaps. Far away. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I'd a, little, a bit more history on it, please, if you don't mind. A bit more history on it. Uh, it's a T-Reg bike, as you know. Indeed. Um, one owner from new, um, as I say, fully serviced, 
Um, it will be getting another service uh, before it goes out as well, mm -hmm. as well as tax and MOT. Yeah. Um, at the moment, it's priced at uh, two one nine nine. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so so really my, my eyes are blazing over now. No, it's a nice bike, and I think we both felt that it was a very clean bike. Yeah, it's very um, tidy, very isn't tidy it? Bike. And, it is. Uh, very tidy bike. It's very nice bike. It's tight it's too when, you, when I rode it. It's, yeah. it's, it's tight. I've got to say, I think that it's a bit high priced, though. Can you maybe do a wee bit better on the, the price for me? Um, yes, yes. I've uh, I've actually had a word with um, uh, my boss. That's what um, I like to hear. We have uh, we've been. Uh, Spit it out, He's a Scotsman. Yeah, 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 he's just yeah. killing him. This is pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's basically what I've said is, if you know, if you do want the bike, mm -hmm. um, as I said, I will tax it and MOT it, um, and I will give a full service before it goes out, mm -hmm. and you're looking at two thousand. What about the warranty on that? Uh, you get a three months warranty on that, unlimited yeah. mileage, full parts and labour warranty. Uh, still, maybe a bit. What about one nine? No. No, it's um, split the difference. I'll meet you in the middle. I'll meet you in the middle, and that's the best I'll be able to do. Well, I yeah. think considering what you're doing for me, I think that would be fair. I think I could be torn to find my checkbook for that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can go for that. Good my really. goodness, it's only because he's Scottish. Well, we've got to keep, we've yeah. got to keep the commission in Scotland, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> so you're doing the deal then? I think we'll do the deal. Yes, I think we'll discuss that and take it on, take it on board. Yeah. But I think we've got a good price. Got no a nice problem. warranty, yeah, I'll take no it from problem. there. No problem. Gary, you're getting better at this. <laughs> hey, old hand now. <laughs> <laughs> well, my work is done, you better get the paperwork together. Absolutely. Now. Yeah. See you later. Okay, bye. Good on you. Well, after failing so miserably on last week's show, it's great to have the punter actually choose one of his three bikes. Of course, my job was made a lot easier because there are very few bikes that fit Alistair's criteria. So let's hope next week's viewer on News Bike Heaven is just as happy. See you then. Sadly, shortly after filming, Alistair was involved in an accident on his 636. He sustained injuries to his hands and wrists and has put looking for a cheap commuter on the back burner. We wish him all the best in his recovery.